Hi, I'm Paul, and I am not a gold bug. A rant on income taxes. And why gold, silver, or whatever, such as Magic the Gathering trading cards, crypto, and other types of alternative investments, can fall even more in price. That's right, folks. I just finished my 2022 income taxes after two days. And not only do I owe way more money than I thought that I would, but filing my income taxes has never been more complicated. That's right. Despite our wonderful technology in 2023. So I kind of need to rant about a few things and also finish up this rant with why it matters for the markets. In fact, yesterday I made a video talking about five brand new reasons why the price of silver, in my opinion, is going to crash hard. Well, here's the sixth reason, right? So a couple weeks ago I talked about three reasons. Yesterday I talked about five reasons. Here's another reason. So I guess we're up to nine reasons why I think the price of silver is going to fall, which is why everybody knows old half dollars call. Physical silver in hand in the teens, obvious to all. That's my call. But today I have seven points to make about income taxes and why it matters to the markets. And we're going to just jump right into it. <clears throat> Here we go. Point number one. First of all, this isn't about whether I did my taxes correctly or not, whether I did my taxes wrong. There shouldn't be a right or a wrong way to do taxes. You should just do your taxes and there should be the way to do your taxes. Um, this also, oops, said the word, um, not going to do that. Not going to do that. That's one of my goals for this week, folks. Let's keep track. Do I have a pen? I think I have a pen somewhere. I'm going to get a pen and I'm going to keep track. That's right. Every time I say the word, um, today, now that doesn't count because I'm giving an example. I'm going to keep track. We got a permanent marker anyway, and I'm going to mark a one. Whoop. Oh my goodness, I'm dropping stuff. Oh, I just... I just huh. Anyway, it's early in the morning, folks. It is Wednesday. It is March 1st. Happy March 1st. And, um... Oh, there's two. Okay. I don't think that counted either. I'm going to be tracking the amount of times that I say the word um today, and I just dropped my pen cap. We'll get to that later. No need to hold up anybody's time for longer. My goodness. This wasn't supposed to be one of those kind of videos, folks. So this isn't about whether I did it the right way or the wrong way. There should not be a right or wrong way. There should just be the way to do it. This also isn't tax advice. Obviously, I'm not smart when it comes to taxes. And furthermore, this is just a rant about income taxes in general. I just finished my 2022 income taxes. So... This is not anything like super specific with nitty gritty details. There's no need for that. It's just a generalized rant. Now, I will get into a couple details when it's pertinent to the example. But that's point number one, right? I guess you'd call them disclaimers, even though they're not even really disclaimers, right? I'm not a tax professional. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not any of these things. So if I'm not a professional in that capacity, do I need to give out disclaimers? I'm just giving my opinion on the markets and the economy. That's what this channel is. It's a lifestyle channel where I share my experiences in life and I relate them to the markets and the economy. So if you have not already, please smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe to my channel. Help my channel grow. And yeah, let's move on to point number two. Anybody else miss the good old days of filing taxes? I do. Here's the good old days. The good old days are going down to the post office, right? Spinning that little wire rack around until you find the forms you need. It's kind of like newspaper. It's like not quite newspaper quality paper, but also not like copy paper. It's like in between. Remember those? Kind of like phone book material, but more durable. So you'd go down to the post office and you'd be like looking for the forms you need. You'd grab them, you'd take them home. Then you'd lay them all out on the kitchen table and you'd grab your calculator. That's when you people had to do math. You had to do math back in the day. But those were the good old days. I miss those. Put line whatever here, put that line there. Put this line here, put that line there. Subtract here, subtract there. Seems like it was simpler in those times. Kind of miss those good old days because this brings me into point number three. 
taxes should not be this complicated. And tax platforms should not be this broken. <clears throat> now, I don't know exactly when I started filing online exclusively. I know it was sometime when I was still in North Carolina. That's when we made the switch. And we left North Carolina in like 2008. I left North Carolina in 2008 when I moved. Um, but it was before then, obviously, because we had done it. But I don't know what companies I was using back at the time. Because when I did my taxes this year for 2022, for anybody who's not familiar with filing taxes in the United States, the year that you're in, so we're in 2023, well, the taxes are due by April 15th generally and then what you're filing for is the previous year so right now we're coming up on the deadline for filing your 2022 taxes here in 2023 but i do my taxes on turbo tax partly because i'm lazy so i like the features of just it's ready to go it's ready to go we got your income already ready to go and when you log in, said some message, if I'm recalling it right, from just two days ago now. Because I did it over Monday and Tuesday. Today's Wednesday morning. Said something like, welcome back. You're in your eighth year of filing through TurboTax or something. So I guess I've been using Turbo. I think I've been using TurboTax for the last eight years. And the platform is just not that good. It's kind of like your phone service plan or like your internet. You just deal with it. And it's just like, ugh. I wish there was a better way, but whatever. I've got this <clears throat> vested interest in staying on this platform because it's what I'm used to. They're tied some way, partnered, subsidiary or whatever with Intuit and Workbooks and Checkbooks and QuickBooks. Whatever it is, I don't know all the different names and companies, but it's easy, right? Theoretically. But it's also like way more complicated than it should be. And the tax platforms are not that really good. Every year I use TurboTax. It's like it's getting worse. It's constantly trying to upsell you services. Every year it goes up in price the software. Even though, I mean, theoretically you could just import that data from the federal government's database. State government databases in an automatic way with scripts and things. It's not like they're sitting there programming every single year. But they're just constantly trying to upgrade your level of service, get you to pay more, add on things you don't need, upsell you. I guess people who get the refunds get like can get these like services where you can get your refund faster, but you pay a premium for that. It's just A pain in the butt, really, using these online tax service platforms, in my experience, since I've been using TurboTax for eight years. Every year it gets worse. It doesn't get better, in my opinion, for the platform itself. The taxes, too. So figure that out. The taxes get more complicated and become more burdensome and get worse every year. And also the tax filing platforms. How do you figure that out? It's amazing. Like importing data from third parties, right? They got all these features, right? Oh, your mortgage is through JP Morgan Chase. We can import that data for you. Fill it out automatically. Click here to log in. Click here to log in. Pop ups. You log in. It's getting the data. Retrieving. They got all these pretty little cartoonish animations. I guess that's what they're working on behind the scenes at TurboTax. So it imports your data, but you still got to change a bunch of stuff because it didn't import it correctly and it didn't format it correctly and... These are like the experiences, right? These are like the experiences that I, I feel. Now, it could be talking about some of it in the wrong way. I mean, it was a lot of stuff over the last couple of days. I don't remember every specific detail, but like the features that they claim are features are kind of features. It's the most very minimum level of feature that you could have, right? Importing data from a third party should be seamless and flawless shouldn't be buggy it shouldn't be glitchy that's the point there but it is 
And I know, because I've been using TurboTax for eight years, apparently. Like I said, so I missed, going back to that point, I missed good old days, just filing by paper. It was easier. It didn't take as much time. So, point number four. You don't want to have a problem with taxes if you got a problem with taxes, right? Like, like that's the main point here, I guess, is, like, you don't want tax problems. And I've had tax problems. Let me give you an example of one tax problem I had. I can't remember what year it was. It was, like, 2017 or 2019. But it was, like, I guess it would be called getting audited, right? I guess it would be called getting audited. I guess I got audited, but I don't even... They don't really use that term unless they do. I guess it's just like, I got a letter, I think it was in August or July or something. It said, hey, you got all this unreported income right here. You owe $10,000, pay it by, and I'm giving approximations because I'm going off my bad memory, right? But I get this letter in July. It says, hey, you got all this unreported income right here. And it was for like tax years back, right? So it's like. It wasn't even for that one year I just filed. It was like for previous years, if I'm going off memory correctly. So you get the letter in July. It says, hey, you owe this money for unreported taxes for this year. Pay ten, And in my case, it was like, pay $10,000. Whoa, imagine getting a letter like that from the IRS. Because Uncle Sam doesn't play, right? When it comes to the government, they don't play away. They don't play like that, right? Um, you know, because you can talk about criminal charges or whatever. And then they'll just pull that money anyway. Or, like, if you're supposed to get a return, you won't get a return. Or, like, there's various reasons that you don't want to have tax problems, period. No matter the level, right? No matter what level of income tax it is, whether it's federal, state, local, or even more. So, in my particular case, it was, like, a July, and I got this letter from Uncle Sam from the federal government, right? When people say Uncle Sam, they mean the federal government. And... It was like, you got all this unreported taxes from this tax year on this unreported income. Explain that. Or, or no, it didn't say explain that. It said, you got all this unreported income from previous year. You owe, like, ten, it was like $10,000 and it accrued, like, it, it, and that included accrued interest and late fees and penalties and all this stuff. And it was like, pay it by August, right? Which was like the next month. I was like, what? What? <laughs> How'd you get a letter like that in the mail? Out of the blue. So, of course, I wrote back and, like, um, I was, like, I don't know if there was one or two back and forths, but the long story short, it wasn't income. And I guess the nice people at the IRS fixed my tax return for that year and I ended up not owing that money. But could you imagine that, right? Like, and that was my specific case of a specific tax problem that I had. There's other people that have worse tax problems where there's actual real financial consequences where it's like, oh, my gosh. So point number four, just the rant, is it's it's so complicated, right? Just the filing, the taxes. Every year it gets more complicated. Every year the platforms that you use as software as a service, right? SaaS, software as a service. Every year that gets worse. And on top of it, you can still have all these problems. Even if you pay an upgrade for the audit protection or whatever they call it, which I don't do. I'm sure you'd still have problems and it would still be a burden when it would still take time and it would still cause a lot of stress and at the end of the day you could still owe money, right? Kind of like paying for an extended warranty that you'll never use that they probably won't even honor anyway on a product that's going to fail, right? It's like... So yeah, point number four is just don't get problems with taxes because you don't want that. Those problems are real. I'm going to take a sip of coffee here because it's early in the morning and my throat's been acting up. Now, today I'm drinking Café El Morro. Delicious. It's early in the morning. 15 minutes in almost. But we're rocking and rolling. It won't be too long today because I'm already on point number five. Point number five on my rant on income taxes is I don't think it matters how many levels of income tax there are. One of the hot topics of the last couple of years is moving from a high tax state to a low tax state. There's no such thing. We got to move to Texas because there's no state income tax. We got to move to Florida because there's no state income tax. I was a resident of Texas for like nine or 10 years, right? I know what that's like. Sure. It was nice not paying income taxes, but government is not free. Government's not free at any level. 
You think just because the state doesn't have an income tax that they're not going to get you in other ways? That's my experience. My experience runs the gamut, really. Because I've been a filer over many years in North Carolina. They have, I don't know if they still do, but at the time it was federal income taxes and state income taxes. Texas, federal income taxes only. Then Ohio. One of the shockers about Ohio, which I don't like, but you just deal with. Because remember, they're going to get your money the other way. There's no such thing as a high-tax state or a low-tax state because there's no such thing as free government. It's going to get paid for one way or another. And this is a side rant, so the rant about these no-tax states. If all of these people are moving to Texas and it's got all of this great things or Florida or pick your income tax-free state at the state level, well, what does that mean? That means you're going to get a lot of these freeloaders, for lack of a better term, Increased homelessness, increased poverty, increased everything because the weather's nice there and there's no state income taxes. So people got all this more money. So guess what? That's where all the homeless are going to go. You know, one of the funniest signs I saw in El Paso from a guy at a corner. It said, uh, he was just holding up a sign and it said, thought I'd ask before I steal. And that was by Cielo Vista Mall by Walmart. When you come down, it's kind of like a little service side street in between Cielo Vista Mall and Walmart in El Paso, Texas. You go down that little side service street, and you got to wait to get on the access road to then get on the interstate. But he was there in that area, and that was his sign. It said, thought I'd ask before I steal. What was the implication? That I was just going to walk into Walmart and steal a bunch of stuff anyway. So it's like, either way, you're paying for it, right? Through higher prices because of rampant theft. Or just give him the money directly so he can go buy what he wants. Going off on side tangents, this is a rant video, though. This is a rant video. So, I don't think it matters the level of income tax. What blew me away is I didn't, I wasn't prepared for a local income tax in Ohio. There is. It's whatever. The local income tax is actually the less burdensome of the state and the federal. Now, the one that is the easiest is the state. Because I have had problems with the local taxes. I guess I'm not doing it right. I don't know, right? I don't know. I moved here from Texas where I was only doing federal. And now not only am I doing states again, as in Ohio, but now I'm doing local. It's like people who aren't from here don't get this concept. It's a weird concept. But it's like, does it even matter? Like, what is it used for? Like, for example, where I live in Perrysburg, it's, it's nice, right? There's no trash on the streets in Perrysburg. It's one of the jokes I make with my kids. What's the difference between Poli What's the difference between Toledo and Perrysburg? Well, in Toledo, people throw trash on the street, and in Perrysburg, they pick it up from the street. And that's sad but true. But here's another thing when it comes to these local taxes, income taxes. Like, roads here are generally nice in Perrysburg. You drive through Toledo. <laughs> You don't want to talk about inducing flashbacks driving through the roads of Toledo. They got some potholes that'll blow your tires and scare the crap out of you. And I know my daughter's hit one of them and blew a tire. Thankfully, it didn't mess up the rim, but they got some serious nasty potholes in Toledo in the city. Like the, and it's all year long. We get the same amount of snow here in Perrysburg as we're getting in Toledo. We got the same road crews coming through clearing off the roads. Why is there such a bad problem with potholes in the city of Toledo? Well, I guess the taxes that they're collecting aren't being used for road service or something. I don't know. I just know that it doesn't matter the level. The level of government is dysfunctional at all levels. There are only degrees of less dysfunctionality. Thankfully, I live in one of the areas with less dysfunctionality. And government's not free either way. And services are arguably not great. So, yeah, it's like, wow, doesn't matter the level, doesn't matter the level of complexity. Government's not free, and services are only more complicated and arguably worse. Yeah, here we are with all these income taxes. Point number six, this is a special note about eBay, right? Because people have been also talking about that as a hot topic with income taxes and eBay. Here's an example, just to show the absurdity of it for my rant. Let's say you got a sick parent coming to live with you, right? They're terminal, right? Now, 
Love all people as I love all people. Don't ever hurt anybody ever. And always be kind to people always. And don't discriminate against anybody for any reason including age. Don't discriminate against animals or plants either because plants have feelings too. Be nice to everything. So here's an example for eBay. Imagine you got a sick elderly parent coming to live with you in their terminal and you just got one of them left. And they're going to die sometime. And It is what it is, right? So you buy some bedding, right? Few, 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 you know, they call it bed in a bag, right? It's got like the sheets, the pillowcases, maybe it has the comforter. So you buy a few of those because your elderly parent's coming. Buy maybe some mattress protectors. Buy some accessibility stuff for the bathroom. You know, that little thing you put on top of the toilet seat so they don't sit down so they can get right back up. Handlebars for the shower stall. <clears throat> maybe the little hose. You convert the shower head into the hose so they can sit down and walk. Like all this stuff, right? You buy them some clothes, you buy them some tennis shoes, you buy them maybe a little TV for the room, you buy them maybe like a cheap cell phone because they don't know how to use the smartphones anymore. All this stuff, right? Because your elderly, sick, dying parents coming to live with you. And then your parent dies before you thought. So you're like, well, great, now I got all this stuff that I paid money for. Walmart, Kohl's, wherever. Okay, I'm going to sell it on eBay. At a loss. All of it at a loss. Boom, that's income. <laughs> How's that income? Even though it's at a loss. Well, you just got to itemize. Well, what if I only qualify for the standard deduction and can't itemize? Right? You see what I'm saying? This is just like everything is ridiculous, right? Everything is ridiculous. Income. I bought this stuff from my elderly dying parent. Never ended up using it. Tried to resell it to recoup a little bit of my money. I sold it at a loss and now that's considered income and I got to deal with that. <laughs> Which brings me to point number seven, right? There's eight points today if I said that or not. I think I'm doing good with the ums. I'm only on two if my calculations are right. So give me a thumbs up in the video below. If I can stay below five ums today in this video. Now these ums don't count because I'm talking about ums specifically. So when I speak about um, it is not in fact an um. If I can keep it below five ums today, give me a thumbs up. Or better yet, subscribe to my channel. I do take commentary in the comments seriously thought in a thought-provoking way i do think about the constructive criticism <laughs> constructive criticism and i appreciate it i do it's one of my goals this week that's what this channel is about right i'm trying to help people especially people who have goals and especially people who have goals that need daily progress this is one of my sub goals for just this week it's been brought to my attention repeatedly that i have a problem with the word um and i'm sure i have a problem with the word right in other words, too, and I'm trying to work on that this week. If I'm doing a good job, smash that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel more importantly. I think I'm at two, but I'm not a mathematician, remember. And I'm terrible at math, so I could be off on the count. So moving on to point number seven. On my income tax rant. Trying to fix income taxes is like trying to reform the Fed. There's no fix. There's no reform. There's no making it better. All these reform the Fed people out there. What the Fed needs to do. It's one of the reasons why I'm so disgusted by the whole thing. Right? There is no fix. You can't fix it. Right? Whether it's the Fed or whether it's income taxes. You can't fix it. The system is broken beyond repair. When something is broken beyond repair, it needs to be thrown out. And in this case, the dust needs to settle for a long time. Before we even think about the way to proceed. Now that would be easy with at the federal level, right? Because, I mean, let's just face it. The debt ceiling's a myth. I did a video on that. The debt's never going to repay. The dollar has already hyperinflated. So what even the whole point of taxes at the federal level is, is beyond me. I guess it's about maintaining the illusion. Again, I'm not saying don't file taxes. I'm saying you don't want to have tax problems. So do whatever you need to do every single year to make sure that you're complying with your taxes. If had tax problems, you don't want them. It's not what I'm saying here. I'm just saying the system is broken beyond repair. And there's things you need to do with things that are broken beyond... There are things you need to do with... There are things you need to do when something is broken beyond repair. You need to throw it out. Sometimes collapse is the solution, right? 
If you think that healthcare is dysfunctional, sometimes people call it sick care. If you think that, you know, housing is dysfunctional, right? Look at homelessness. I ran a homeless shelter. I ran a soup, a soup kitchen. I need to stop saying bleh so much too. Well, I'll work on it. Education. Every child left behind, right? Every child's left behind. Things are broken beyond repair, including the income tax system. Now, at the federal level, that's one thing. At the state and local level, that's a different thing. States can't print money. They can get some of that juicy grant money from Uncle Sam, but it's not all of the income. So what do you do? What do you do? I mean, bubble gum and duct tape? Still? Again? How many times is that going to hold? Trying to fix income taxes is like trying to fix the Fed. There is no fix. Which brings me into final point, point number eight, which ties it into gold, silver, and other alternative assets. Gold and silver are not alternative assets, by the way. Gold and silver are money. There's a huge difference. But I want to include other assets because there's a lot of bullishness in the alternative asset space. Not even really assets. I'm talking about your like trading card games, which I don't own. I just observe the market <clears throat> like your Magic the Gathering and your Pokemon and your Yu-Gi-Oh and all this other stuff. The other one would be cryptos. <clears throat> if you haven't done your taxes this year, there's a lot of specific questions about cryptos. But, or even other markets, right? Like, like car dealers happy about tax season because they think they're going to sell a whole bunch of cars. If people are getting if people are getting back less in tax refunds this year, how are these markets gonna be supported? How are gold and silver gonna rise if people are getting back less money? And they're dealing with inflation in other areas. In my case, I owe more money than I've ever owed this year. Bam! Hits just keep coming, baby. Unemployed. Looking for a job? Write those checks. Write those checks for your income taxes. So if people owe more money this year, or if people are getting back less in refunds, I didn't get a refund, I owe more, right? So I don't know about the refunds. But what I hear just casually through YouTube and the news is that people are getting back less money in tax refunds this year. But either way, whether you're paying more in taxes or whether you're getting back less, how's all this money going to go into these markets that people are hopeful for and bullish on? It's not. It's just another reason. Another reason. So I'm over 28 minutes and I'm not going to go over 30 today. I think I've only said the word um twice. If you've been following along too, let me know in the comments below. Am I doing a good job? What do you not like about income taxes? What's your rant about income taxes? I know people got them. It's that time of the year again. <laughs> I mean, obviously, if you're just a wage earner, some people have to deal with this quarterly. <laughs> it's broken. The system is broken. The system is dysfunctional in so many ways. It really comes back to our money being no good. That's what the real problem is here. But, you know, people don't want to change. People don't want to accept what's needed. What's needed will happen eventually. We'll go back to gold and silver. We always do. We need honest money, right? That's what the dysfunctionality comes to. So, yeah. There's another few points. There's a rant. Thank you for allowing me to rant today. I think gold and silver have more downside to go. This is just another reason. This is just another reason. I'd say the check is in the mail, but they just zapped it out of my bank account. ACH, baby. Uncle Sam likes that. They'll zap money out and they'll put money in. Doesn't matter how it happens. It's just instant now. Although the check is in the mail for the local taxes. 
Anyway, thank you for your time.